I'm Taylor and today I'm going to be talking about how to survive online schooling, especially college online. First, I want to say thank you guys so much for 500 subs. That's so exciting. We're halfway to a thousand, which is just insane. And 500 people can fit in a jumbo jet. So if anyone wants to fly all of us somewhere, that's great. It won't be me, but if one of you guys is super rich, I know that most of you guys subscribed for college related stuff and Northeastern related stuff. So that's why today I'm gonna talk about my personal experience and tips when it comes to taking classes online. Most of us by now have had a lot of experience taking online classes since we had to basically change everything <laughs> about our learning environment within like a few weeks and a few days halfway through spring semester. The thought of going back online or doing some type of mix online and in person isn't super new to a lot of people, but I personally could always use more help with figuring out how to do online classes because that's just not my forte. So if you are also like that and you want some help, then keep watching because I have some general online class tips, but then I have some that are more specific to college, which I think would be super helpful, especially if you are a freshman who is going into college and your first semester is gonna be online, which is very unfortunate. <laughs> oh, there's an ant on the wall. So getting into the general tips when it comes to taking classes online. First thing that you should do is email your professor once you get enrolled in the class if you have any obstacles that would hinder your learning environment or something like that or communication. If you have a time difference, unreliable Wi-Fi, email them, let them know people are being well, I don't want to generalize, but most all of my professors were pretty accommodating during this time and they should be. If they're not, take it up with the dean of the college that the course is in. Um, second thing that you should do is look at the syllabus and figure out what format the exam is on. If it doesn't list it, email the professor again. <laughs> you need to know if it's gonna be on Canvas, Blackboard, Lockdown, and if it's on Lockdown, if there's gonna be a camera or not. These are all very important things, people. Third thing that you should make sure that you do is write down all the classes that you're taking, all of the important dates, meeting times, somewhere that you will always see. I <laughs> got very confused with meeting times. <laughs> and also just, I felt very frazzled with when to turn in assignments because the times were shifted because of different time zones that we were accommodating. So just figure out when things are due. Those are the first three things that you should do once you get enrolled in a course. Next thing, connect with people in your class. If you already know people in your class, great. If you don't, I don't really know how to connect with people online. It's kind of awkward. I think that they set up group chats in online courses, especially for freshmen. Professors should do that. I don't know if they will. They definitely should, especially because freshmen won't know anyone. Don't pressure yourself to be perfect during this time. Online schooling is hard, especially if you're in a chaotic environment, you don't have reliable Wi-Fi, you have a time, do time zone difference. Be forgiving on yourself if your GPA isn't at its highest or if you find turning in assignments more difficult. But some ways to help that are to make a checklist and stick with it as well as making a daily schedule and sticking with it because having a routine is the greatest relief for our little monkey brains. We love when things are simple and we love forming habits. Good or bad habits, that's kind of where you get to figure things out. <laughs> Set aside a certain place to study and only do work there. Don't go on your phone to watch TikTok. Don't text your friends. Don't FaceTime people. Don't eat food there. Oh my God, do not associate that area with meals, okay? You will get hungry in the middle of class. Trust me, it has happened to me and eating ramen during biochem is just a weird experience. <laughs> Make sure that you set aside a certain area. For me, that was literally where I'm sitting right here. I didn't sit in a comfy chair in the corner of my room. I didn't sit on my bed to work. I just sat on the floor. And lastly, minimize phone usage. Don't go on your phone during class. Don't scroll through Facebook, blah, blah, blah. That's what people always say, but like, so now that that basic stuff is done, let's get into college specific tips for online schooling. Number one, <laughs> your counselors at school should still be available. A lot of people are struggling with mental health. Talk to a professional if you're going through problems right now. 
It is very helpful, even if it is on Zoom. It's kind of awkward, but like you get used to it. What was I saying? My dad started power washing the house and that just gave me a miniature heart attack. So we're back. Number two, college is very different from high school. Everybody knows that once you step foot into a college classroom, but it's different when it's online. Don't interrupt the lecturer. Oh my gosh. One of my physics courses, there are like a hundred plus people in this physics one lecture. A girl kept interrupting the professor to ask questions every two minutes. There is no stupid questions. We all need help, okay? But that's why there's a raise your hand feature. It was so disruptive and also I could tell how done the professor was getting. So he shut off people's mics on the next lecture. Don't turn on your mic. Turn off your, actually just keep your mic off. I don't need to hear your dog barking or your mom asking if you want some sliced fruit. Like. I'm here to learn what a molecule is. Number three, if you're new to college, buckle up because professors just love assigning things all for the same week. They will somehow put all of your exams in the same week, same day, if not same 12 hour block. That's why earlier I mentioned writing down important dates. If you're new to college, be ready. If you're not new and you're here, um, thank you for watching this and also you definitely understand what I'm talking about. Number four, sometimes you get an hour to take an exam, sometimes you get 24 hours, sometimes you get like 36. I don't know, but just be ready for it. <laughs> know what you're getting into because sometimes they'll like say that you have 24 hours to take a test, but the actual time of the test is like an hour. And that mistake has almost happened to me before and it was, horrific once I found out that I only had an hour to take the test, but I was taking my time. I did well on the exam, but it was just kind of a shock to the system. Number five, studying. I struggle with this, but try to minimize distractions. Let people know that like you're going to be studying. I just find living with roommates who are also students is so much easier than living with my parents who haven't been students for like 40 years. <laughs> They just kind of forget how much time goes into being a student. Let them know when you have an exam coming up and when you need to study. Just let the people in your life know that like you can't watch American Idol tonight because I have a final the next day, sorry. Number six, work smarter, not harder. Now is not the time to be trying to like grind it out and do everything all at once, you know? This is the time to figure out what is the most efficient method of learning for you. So for me, in one of my courses, the professor would post the PowerPoint before. So for myself, I would just follow along, write the slide number in like the side and then like bullet point what she said, but not what was on the slides. Then after each class, I would download the slides and then add in whatever she wrote on the slides digitally. And then I'll put them in Google Drive because <laughs> next point, the format of the exam. If it is open note, take advantage of this. If you're allowed to work with people, take advantage of that. Because I had an open note test and with the slides that were annotated from what my professor said, I could access them on my phone a lot quicker or I could also just like command F. Use your resources to the fullest extent that they are applicable. Eight, Chegg, Khan Academy, Course Hero, all your friends. Don't use them to cheat. You, you can get kicked out of school for that. I've literally talked to a professor and she was like, yeah, I kicked out a student last year for cheating. So that's horrific. <laughs> Number nine, most important, it is always awkward when you log off of Zoom, when you can see your professor and you've both said bye and there's that long moment before either of you clicks exit and you're like, do I exit first? I don't wanna be awkward and seem kind of cold and dismissive, but like, I don't want them to think I'm expecting them to talk more, you know? Zoom calls, always awkward, get used to it. It's gonna be like the new, like remember waiters when they would bring you your food and they would say, oh, enjoy your food, enjoy your meal. And you'd be like, oh, thanks, you too. It's like, it's that same energy remember waiters, you know, like, oh my God, I miss <laughs> restaurants, but I'm not gonna eat at one anytime soon. Anyway, that's it. <laughs> if you can't tell about my weird long-winded rambling, 
those are all the tips that I have for just in general online classes and then also just taking college courses online. Always wear a mask, wash your hands, use hand sanitizer, stay safe out there, don't go crazy. Thank you so much for 500 subs. It means so much to me. Ah, I woke up and I was like, oh my God, that's so many people. Anyway, bye. I don't know why I blew a kiss. Oh.